from our studios at Riley High School, it's time for Michiana's award-winning student talk show, Buzz in the Bend. Hello and welcome to Buzz in the Bend, Michiana's award-winning student talk show. I'm Ethan Hems from Riley High School. And I'm Marisha Brown from Clay High School. Last week, South Bend schools received national attention with a live broadcast on Good Morning America. Many students, teachers, board members, and administrators gathered in front of Riley High School for this exciting opportunity. Sean Paul Finch brings us the story. We're very excited to be here. Good Morning America is uh, here live in South Bend, Indiana. We're getting nationwide recognition with regard to the work that we've done with providing access to students, for students rather, uh, with our Wi-Fi and our buses going to areas where we don't have as good Wi-Fi as we do in other areas. We're just, we're just excited. You know, Raleigh High School was uh, identified as one of the most distinguished schools in the nation for Project Lead the Way. So we're a magnet in computer science school. We've got a lot of amazing teachers. Uh, we'll get you a real one of these, but $20,000 wow. for the school district, for the South Bend Community School District to fund teacher projects. It's exciting, but you know what? It's also about our students. It's about our board. It's about our team's hard work and to see our students here and to make sure that we're providing Wi-Fi not only for families but for students so the parents can access resources. Oh, I think it's a great thing to help, the, help out the community. It is very generous. It's just a huge surprise and it's going to be very, very helpful. So that's pretty interesting. Cool. It's, like, it's nice to see like my, the school that I go to on uh, national television. Yeah, it's nice. Even though it's like something little, like just people waving their pom poms, like it was still yeah, it's, a good moment. It's still nice, like showing some school spirit and just to get recognized on a national level is <laughs> is amazing as is. And like we already did like the well, Wendy show. The Wendy show, yeah. yeah. So just having like getting it recognized again is just it's oh. really nice. Yeah. <laughs> A woman accidentally shot herself in both legs while stopped along the toll road on September 29th. Trooper Luis Alvarez was patrolling the Indiana toll road when he stopped to check on a disabled vehicle. Then, a gunshot was heard from inside. Taylor Anderson had accidentally shot both of her legs while passing a handgun over. Now, Marisha, how does that happen? I have no idea. I think people need to, like, before they even get a handgun, like, I understand. Mm -hmm. Being a woman, you gotta be safe out here because people are crazy. <laughs> but like, at least know how to use the gun. Like, at least know how to handle the gun. Like, I'm I'm more so wondering like, why was there a hand? Well, there's a handgun to begin with because like people have self defense. Why was it being passed over? How did it go? How did it shoot both legs? Yeah. Was were her legs like crossed or something like that? So, then, it just went right through both or. There's a know, lot of maybe, there's a lot of mysteries with this story here. <laughs> maybe it wasn't maybe it was like one of the guns that would go like you know. <laughs> just right through her. <laughs> oh wait, we can't joke about this. I'm sorry, Taylor. I'm sorry. Um, we are now halfway through this fall semester and our sports teams have had some ups and downs. Let's see what's going on in South Bend Sports Zone. Welcome to the week four edition of SBST Sports Zone. We're your hosts, Commander Jenkins and Davis Holly. Week six of football season has passed, and some teams won and some teams took an L. The first game featured the Adams Eagles facing off against New Prairie and losing a close one, 16 to 20. So, Commander, this is like a very close game. This is um, a make or break um, game for the Adams Eagles, yeah. as this was going to put their momentum back into the season. But um, because they were going in, they had just came off of a loss. They were three and one, and they were just trying to get another win, um, go back to four and one, and just try to improve on the season. Um, yeah, but the, yeah. a, they're a tough team. So exactly, you know. they have a massive line. They have a 
bunch of prospects going to college. Also, like they lost um, Adams lost their number one quarterback early in the uh, quarter, um, like early in the game, and then their freshman quarterback actually stepped up and threw two touchdowns. Right. Do and you uh, feel like if they had their starting quarterback, you think they would have probably won or even did better? Yeah, or they do you they think their backup, you know, like they would have outplayed. I feel like if they would have had their starter, like you know, he was a starter for a reason, you know. Yeah. Like they knew for sure he could get the job done, and he probably could have if he would have stayed in the game and wouldn't have gotten hurt. Yes, yes, he could have. Yeah, but um, besides that, they did they did pretty well. New Prairie came back, scored with like three minutes left in the game, and Adams couldn't do much else from that point on. So yeah, but moving that on. Happens. Next up, Clay went on the road and faced Jimtown Jimmies and took a beating, losing in the dominant fashion of 49 to six. How Man. do you feel about that, David? 49 to six. Well, you know, Jimtown, they just, just made a statement straight up. They just, they made, did. A, they just made a statement. They, they, they wanted to let everyone know that they can go out and they can score big, just like the rest of them. Clay, unfortunately, they wanted to, you know, get another win on their season. They thought this was going to be the game, but I mean, they, they, they know, always try, so that's you know, good. They scored early on Jimtown, but Jimtown took it from there. So there's pretty much nothing else you can do. Yeah. Any other comments on that game? I mean, I just feel like Clay, Clay, they're trying, but yeah. you know, they just don't have like the players. Exactly. Like, but they are on the rise for sure. They are. They got yeah. their first win. Exactly. Their first game. So yeah. I know they were happy, but yeah, exactly. But to yeah. me, it's like they're yeah. turning back they to just, like yeah. the old, the old clay. Yeah, you know? but they they got to fix their ways and you know finish out the season. They will. Yep. They will. Last up, we headed over to TCU School Field for that anticipated matchup between the two and three Riley Wildcats and the one and four Washington Panthers. Blake Wesley was on the field getting our SBS TV Sports Zone Team of the Week night segment. At school field on the special Panthers senior night, the Riley Wildcats traveled to take on Washington Panthers as the Panthers were desperate for a win. Coach Tamek spoke probably about his team. All the, all the months that we had where we couldn't get together and we couldn't build continuity and trust, but these kids have, have, have jumped on board and they followed the instructions, they followed the guidelines. Uh, they've just done an excellent job and it's really a credit to this generation, uh, which doesn't, you know, Always the youth don't always get the credit that they deserve, but this, this generation deserves a lot of credit for putting up with probably the more, one of the most difficult situations athletically or academically we've ever seen. Our ability to, to face adversity. I think the public in general thinks that when high school kids nowadays face something tough, uh, they tend to shut down or give up. And our kids have actually showed 100% the opposite, that, that the harder things have gotten for them, the more that they've answered the bell. And I'm very proud of them for that. The Panthers had a young quarterback who described how he and the Panthers felt this week. I feel like we were very prepared. We've been working hard at practice all week. I didn't start on offense just last year, but I started on defense. But I'm starting on offense this year, not starting on defense. Um, to not throw any more picks this year, um, to get a to rush more yards, and to keep winning. Coaching in South Bend is is one of the greatest things you can do on the planet. The kids here are fantastic. With SBS TV Sports Zone, I'm Blake Wesley. Thanks, Blake. Riley Wildcats ended up winning a close game 24 to 21. They are now 3 and 4 on the season, and now the Washington Panthers are now scrambling to find some wins as they are now 1 and 6 on the year. 1 uh, and 6. Yeah. 1 and 6. They're heading into their last stretch, their last two games. But you know, like, um, this is a game that they really needed if they really wanted some momentum for their year. Uh, for their season, you, you know, know they, they really wanted exactly. to beat Riley. It was it was a city game, city rivalry that always sparks. You know, there was actually fans from both sides. A lot you know? of fans exactly. Too. So um, Washington, they they were behind 21 to seven in the third quarter before busting out some big runs, scoring came a back. touchdown. Riley answered with a field goal. Washington came back, scored another touchdown, made it really close. But Riley was able to hang on. Get and, some clutch yeah. tackles and all of exactly. that. Exactly. You know, um, very close game. Very close game. Yeah, um, highlighting some Washington players. You know, Tyrone Davis made a made a wonderful catch yes, for a did. touchdown. You know, um, their sophomore quarterback. We actually got to talk to him on the field. He he made some wonderful plays. Um, but Riley, Riley, they did a lot too. You know, Commander Jenkins. He he ran the ball for Commander like massive Jenkins games. Yeah, lot. 50 50 lot. yards, I think. We also had um, Tyson Lee. Yeah, Tyson Lee. He he actually made the game-winning sack. Yes, he did. Know, on the last play. 
Yeah, man. It was, it was a good game. Moving on, Notre Dame will face off against Florida State after taking last Saturday off through the players testing positive to COVID-19. So, Commander, do you think that, like, taking the game off last Saturday actually benefited them or, like... I mean, like, if they was practicing hard and ready, mm -hmm. probably. But if they were just like, okay, we got COVID-19, so we just going to, like, chill for today and, like, do that stuff, no. Exactly, like... To me, I would have been pretty mad if I was on that Notre Dame team because, yes. like, you know, like, that Saturday night, they were supposed to go out there and just Prepare play. The Exa whole week exactly. Um, instead, they had to, like, reschedule that game. So, like, now they have to face them later on down the season. Yeah. Maybe some of their players will be hurt by then or, like. Anything could happen. Exactly. Um, so they, they were just trying to get, get a win this, this past Saturday. But now they're, they're looking to go up against Florida State, a good, talented team. That can take over any type of game. Do you think Notre Dame could beat them? Yeah, I, I feel like they can if they do the right things, if they just play smart, and if they don't just they don't give the game away. That's it. Yeah. It's literally, and that's the easiest Florida thing. Is, that's the key to winning. Florida is a they're a tough team, and they always they never give up. Exactly. They always try their hardest. You know, they're able to dominate any game if, as long as you give it to them. You know, never yeah. give them a chance. Mm -hmm. Exactly. SBS TV Sports Zone invites you to send us any footage of South Bend Schools Athletics. Send us your posters and school songs. You can send us this on our Facebook page at SBSTV slash WTL or email us at davisale 2 at gmail.com. Tonight, we have the three and four Riley Wildcats taking on the Bremen Lions at Bremen. The three and four Adams Eagles will be taking on Jimtown on the road. The Washington Panthers holds Gary Westside at home. Lastly, the one and six Clay Colonials will be taking on John Glenn at home. So, Commander, what are your predictions on tonight? Well, for Bremen and us, do you know that's that's basically like a semifinal for the NIC South Championship. Yes. So it's a if Bremen wants to win this NIC Championship, they have to beat Riley. If Riley wants to win it, they have to beat Jim, uh, be, they have to beat Bremen. You know, like. Well, you know, I was watching you know film like, and so I was watching Marion and yeah, we we're Bremen, copying yeah. Marion's defense and exactly. Marion was destroying Bremen. Yeah, exactly. Like, destroying them. So. If we just do that, I think that we will have a good chance mm -hmm. of beating Bremen. Exactly. And Bremen, they, all they need is this win, and they will win the NIC South. But if Riley wins, they have the chance to take it all over. Take it back. Exactly. So um, that's that for the Riley Wildcats. We wish them luck this, uh, this Friday. Um, moving on, Washington taking on Gary Westside. They're trying to get another win. Well, you know, yeah. Riley went against uh, – Gary Westside. A couple so. weeks back, yeah, yeah, and they actually dominated them. So. so Washington might be getting their second one of the year. Yeah, but you never uh, don't you count never anybody know out. Count yeah, them out, but. exactly. They just got to play hard, play and play to the best of their abilities. Clay, um, they're just also looking to take another win, you know, get some momentum back on the year and just finish what they started. Same goes for Adams. We wish them luck. Hopefully Sidney Jeffries and company can, like, do, do what they're supposed to do and just finish out strong. Yes, sir. All right. Thanks for tuning in to our week four edition of SBST Sports Zone. I'm Davis Ali. And I'm Commander Jenkins. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. We are excited to see students from our audio video production program go on to do great things. This week, I got to check in with our 2020 alumnus, Alex Almanza, to see what he's been up to at Ball State, where he majors in broadcast journalism. All right, Alex, so how are you? Well, I'm doing pretty good. Uh, I woke up this morning. I didn't think I would be on the set of Buzz in the Bend uh, here at Riley High School. It's very different. It's kind of like switching seats for, for once. I started off Buzz in the Bend, and I'm passing the torch now on to you guys. And uh, it's so different. It's so different now. Yeah, so now that you're like a former host, how do you feel about the new Buzz in the Bend? Well, I wouldn't call it a new buzz in the bend. I think you guys are continuing a legacy that's, um, that's always been there. And when we started Buzz in the Bend, we, we wanted it to be very upbeat. Uh, and we wanted it to have a, like, just kind of a, not a morning show vibe, I, I guess like a morning show vibe. Um, something that you can wake up to and, you know, just, just kind of watch. It's really, it was really fun being a host on Buzz in the Bend, um, just with the, the amount of freedom that you got to have with all the people in this roundtable discussion. Obviously, with COVID, you can't have three people at a desk, yeah. but it's still fun interacting one-on-one -on -one with someone else. And so now you're at Ball State University. 
Yes. So how's that going? How's the broadcasting there? Well, uh, it's a step above what I'm usually comfortable with. Uh, I got into the program thinking, okay, I got this. And for the most part, I did. Uh, you know, I would, you know, when I was here, I would look into the camera and I'd be like, okay, this, this is exactly, you know, I, I, I've been doing this for quite a while. Uh, but when I went to Newslink uh, and, you know, I, I did my first newscast, it was like a deer in the headlights. I looked in the teleprompter, I was like, this is live, there's no take, there's no retakes, this is all, you know, this is all how it's going to be like in the real world. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like the adrenaline rush, just the, you know, just, just the fact that you're, you're live and that anything you say, you know, you can't replay, you, you can't go back and say, oh, let's try that again. Um, so it kind of gives you a new, it's a new bar that's been raised, and I really like that. And what advice would you give for the CTE students in this program, in the audio video production program? Um, I would say just try everything, because I came into this program thinking I would be a radio DJ or a radio engineer, and I came into this room, and I saw all the cameras, and I was like, this is pretty cool. I... I like radio, but I think I like this a little more. And that was because I tried a lot of different things. And I still like radio. I'm not saying that, you know, radio is not my passion because it's something that I can do in my free time, um, something that I can look forward to if I ever decide not to go into uh, into anchoring. But I don't think that's going to be the case. I really like I really like actually going out and talking to people, whether it's reporting, anchoring, um, and I think with that, you know, just try everything because you never know what you're going to run into that you might like. Well, thank you so much for coming back. Yeah, for sure. I'm, I'm, I'm glad to be here on, on, on the set. It's, it's, like I said, it's very different. I've never been on, on the set that we built. And, yeah. you know, it's, it's a lot of fun. So thank you thank very you. much. Yeah, I'm actually really proud of Alex. I am too. It's, it's nice to see what he's doing nowadays besides just, just being our <laughs> announcer here. Yeah, definitely good for his resume. Oh, of course, of course. <laughs> We're proud of you, Alex. We're proud. Last Friday, Riley High School held a pep rally to celebrate homecoming. Let's go check it out. the pep rally yeah um it was hard to get in i, I could imagine because <laughs> considering you're not a riley student or anything yeah <laughs> so i just had to be like yeah i'm with the camera crew and then just stand there and do nothing i'm i'm, I'm with the band basically <laughs> I'm with the band. Yeah. <laughs> i i will have to say though it was surprising to see how like like how like many seniors still went out there even how cold it was and like how short it was too it was only yeah like it was raining yeah it was like it was raining for a little bit it was like 20 minutes Mm -hmm. There's like, it's still no, it's still good to see like how many kids have school spirits still like during all this. Yeah, and then it was like weird because y'all didn't like boo the freshmen, so yeah, because the freshmen weren't there. Yeah, <laughs> that's the point. It, it's basically just like a diet pep rally. <laughs> I mean, they were they were probably there in spirit. They know? they were there in spirit. We, they're in our hearts and minds forever. <laughs> <laughs> and that does it for this week's edition of Buzz in the Bend. <laughs> As always, be sure to click that subscribe button and tap the bell icon to get notified when we upload a new video. Make sure to follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And tune into our 24-7 studio radio station, WETL 91.7 FM, The Mix. Have a, Have a great, great day. day.